Good morning, folks. I hope you had a great weekend and welcome to today's video. So today I have three, uh, sorry, today I have four pairs on watch rather. Those are Swiss Yen, Pound Yen, Dollar Yen and Pound Kiwi. So I'm going to break them down for you now, as always, give you my thought process and tell you what I will be looking for from these pairs uh, preferably before the end of the day, but if they take a little bit longer to shape up, that's absolutely fine. And if they don't shape up at all, that's absolutely fine as well. So my favorite of the bunch is Swiss Yen, which as you can see, if we just scroll left, doing what a lot of traders don't do here, scrolling left, you can see we are at an all-time high. We've just tapped into an all-time high, okay? What do we have? We have a near miss, okay? What do we know about these near misses? So we have the all-time high here, we have a near miss, price gets close to it, doesn't quite tap into it. And when that happens, often we, whoops, let's put that back. Often we scoop all the way back up to take out the high, which we near miss to, tap into it. And on the higher time frames, we typically break above, catch people the wrong side of the market, and then move to the downside. And you can see that we potentially have the start of a, an evening star formation here. Of course, this candle hasn't closed, but we we could well and truly uh, see the floodgates open, I think, on this pair before the end of the day, especially as we have economic data, I believe, coming out of Switzerland in about 40 minutes time as I speak, which could uh, provide a little bit of impulsive momentum to the downside. And one of the things that makes me think that we might be moving to the downside is if we just analyze this what's been happening down here. We have a, a near miss to this low. We have a near miss to this low and this low near misses to this low. So when we have a near miss to a low, that increases the likelihood of price moving to the downside, especially when we've tapped into a high, which we near missed to last time around. And the more near misses we have to a previous near miss, the more likely it is that price will find its way down to these lows. Okay. If I just drill down, you can see so we've had we've had some four hour momentum now. The four hour has shown its hand. OK, of course, the daily chart, that's an unconfirmed candle. But we kind of have confirmation here of the move to the downside by way of this bearish high test candle. OK, so we have confirmation on the daily. The four hour is showing its hand. OK, impulsive momentum to the downside. We're both we're back below this high and this high now. That's another tick in the box. And you can see what I was looking for. I'll just show you my forecast. This is the forecast that I did on Saturday morning. So I wanted to see a break below. We have a sharp move down here followed by a sharp move up. So there was always the possibility that we could have come down to here, perhaps near miss to this area, pushed back down, tapped into that area, and then moved higher. And then this would have been a bear flag to push higher, especially since there's a sharp move down here and a sharp move up, giving me a clue that perhaps there could have been liquidity here, uh, which we could have tapped into, pushed up, and then we end up with this bull flag to push higher. So to mitigate the chance of that happening, what I was looking for is a break below here. And then if we did get the break below that uh, sharp low there, and we corrected afterwards, then that would imply that there was not enough liquidity here to send price to the upside for that bull flag, that larger bull flag to potentially form and push higher. Okay, so now that we've we're down below here, okay, and at the moment at least it doesn't appear that there was enough liquidity here to send price to the upside. So with that in mind, what I'll be looking for is for price to correct and for a tight flag to form. Okay, looking at how this is forming, if we just zoom down to the 15 minute it's it's likely that we could see something like this something like that before we move to the downside we shall see but what i'll be looking for is a tight flag to form okay i'm going to set a google calendar reminder after this video to remind me to check this periodically to see how the tight flag is forming if it Actually, if it indeed it actually forms at all. But what I'll be do looking for is this tight flag to form, and then I'll be looking to get short on the break of it or within it. And then I'll be able to manage it down to this consolidation here. You can see we have a, an area of a, a small amount of volume. I don't think it's a, I, th I think the floodgates will open. If we do correct, we could likely be seeing a move down to at least here as a solid first target. But just because there's a little area of consolidation here. I think that that would be a, a solid first target that we could uh, 
be heading to for something in the region of about 8%. So that is Swiss Yen. I'm going to take that alert off of the charts now and then just um, just monitor this periodically. I just had that on the charts just to see if we pushed up to these areas. But now that we've got some commitment, I've taken that off the charts. So that is Swiss Yen, Pound Yen. If we just look at Pound Yen, okay, so you can see on the higher time frames, let's analyze where we are. So partly why this is lower down on the list is because you can see that we've kind of tapped into this more of an inflection point rather than a significant high. But that doesn't mean we can't capitalize on a move to the downside. So we've tapped tapped into on the monthly chart. Now let's go down to the weekly. Actually, it'd be a little bit easier to see. You can see we tapped into this area of volume here. There was volume here where price sold off aggressively from last time around. So there was always a good chance that it would do the same, especially when we had a near miss down here to this low, okay, which would likely get filled. Okay, so we tapped into this exchange. Of course, it would be better if we uh, tapped into this one here, a more significant high. But, you know, there's still a lot of profit potential that could be made down to this low here which we near missed to last time around. And you'll see as I drill down a little bit, a series of near misses once again, just as with Swish in. So if we just if we only ever wait for price to reach highs such as this, then we could be sitting here waiting forever and not capitalizing on you know moves in the meantime before we potentially take out those higher time frame highs. Okay. You can see that we narrowly near missed it as well. That is a slight negative, but on different brokerage data, we we may well have tapped into that high, which we near missed to here. But we have the three drives. You can see the first drive, second drive, third drive. Then we get the commitment, which is often what we see. You can see before I even drill down, you can see a near miss here to this low. This low near misses to this low and this low near misses to this low. That is a very big tick in the box for me. We have this potential impulse correction continuation to take out these lows and um, what we're seeing here as well if you watch my if you've watched my previous video it looks to me as that price is just scooping back up to fill this bullish wick i've talked often about how bullish wicks can be filled before we see the move to the downside well we filled that by way of last week's weekly close here so that's a tick in the box if we just assess the pullback so i'm measuring the pullback from here to the bottom of structure that's kind of a 60 percent pullback which is just slightly above what i would normally anticipate seeing on a pound on a pair such as pound yen we'd normally see the line in the sand would normally be 50 percent, but nothing's absolute so there's a slight negative and i'm aware of that as i drill down you can see once again what do we have the same thing that we uh, i showed you a moment ago okay we have a high here what happens we come back up we near miss that high Price then comes back up, taps into the high, okay, and fills this bullish wick. I've talked often about, as I talked a moment ago, about these bullish candles with a big wick above them. They often get filled before we move to the downside. We've now tapped into the area. I am mindful, however, th of the fact that we have wicked to the area and not through it. So that is a, a slight negative. But what I like about this is the fact that we have tapped into a daily high, okay, a daily kind of double top area, even if you don't see this one as as significant we certainly tapped into a more standout one here and we're trading at the moment beneath both of these highs that is a tick in the box okay so i'm just going to drill down now so you can see the momentum is coming in as with swish yen so what i'll be looking for is the following so the four hour has shown its hand if we just drill down to the one hour this is slightly corrective if you look at this on the one hour this is slightly a corrective move down and what that may be because of is because we never broke the high okay as i've talked as i just mentioned a moment ago this this has a slightly corrective nature to it which might imply that we're pushing back up to tap into the high and this is we're waiting for the correction after the impulse uh, becomes one of our big uh, best friends okay so what i'll be looking for is my preferred entry because we normally break above these higher time frame highs would be a tap above this high followed by a push back in and a flag and if we got that then i'll be looking to get short on the break of the flag within it and then i'll be able to manage it down to this sharp move here okay for something in the region of two two and a half percent however at this moment in time it's looking more likely certainly by the end of the day that we will break below here 
you might be thinking, well, what about this low? Well, if you look at this one, this wasn't a sharp move, and it kind of moved up quite correctively from there, whereas this one, it was a sharp move down followed by a sharp move up. And also, on the four-hour chart, which holds more weight, you can see this red candle here. Okay, so I think that the this low holds more weight because it's visible on the four-hour chart. The correction is visible on the four-hour chart, the red candle, okay, and because it was more of a sharp move. So if we break below here and we correct afterwards, then what's looking more likely is this entry, which I forecasted, and then I would look to get short on the break of it or within it, not concerned about this low by this point, because by this point we would have retraced a significant proportion of this move up and the floodgates would likely open for a move to the downside. And then I would be able to manage it down to this low here for something in the region of eight to 9%, depending on how the flag forms. Okay. So I'm going to set a Google calendar reminder to remind me to check this now that we've had the impulsive momentum and to see if we actually get that flag. I'm going to check this periodically. So that is pound yen. I'm going to move on to dollar yen. Okay, so dollar yen has pulled back sharply. Okay, so we'll touch on that in a second um, as I draw down. So on this pair, you can see that we've tapped into a significant high. According to my data, at least, this is an all-time high. We've tapped into that area. Okay, we've tapped, we tapped into that area there. We've got a solid push down. Now, one of the reasons that this is lower down on the list is because with all time highs, we typically, in particular, we usually break the high before pushing back in. OK, yes, we but we have other ticks in the box. We have this near miss down to this low, meaning that this could be an impulse correction continuation to push lower to take out this low and eventually take out this low, which this this low near miss too. It appears that as with pound yen, we're coming back up to tap it to fill this bullish wick here. OK, on the weekly chart. However, we have we do also have a, a reversal structure. OK, so we've tapped into this low here where there was an area vol of volume and this could be a reversal structure. And then this becomes a correction. To push up to tap into this high, this all time high, which we didn't break above, which we would normally anticipate seeing before a move to the downside. So that is partly why this is lower down on the list is because we have a reversal structure at an area of volume. And because we didn't break the all-time high, and perhaps this is a reversal structure to break that all-time high to push back in. However, you can see that we have had a rejection from a daily uh, a daily double top area there, okay? And we've had a, a solid push down on the four-hour chart. So we don't necessarily need to do that, okay? So I'm factoring all these things in. We've also not just tapped into here. We've also tapped into another area of volume here, which caused a sharp runoff. OK, we tapped into that area and this area. So perhaps this is just a near miss to this area for that impulsive move down uh, before that impulsive move down occurred for that move to the downside. So just a little bit more neutral on this one. But what I'll be looking for from this pair today is the following. OK, I'll be looking for if we just whoops, let's get the right. That's it. Get rid of that paintbrush. So what I'll be looking for is either a three touch. I'll be looking for if we just measure this, this pullback is exactly 50 percent. OK, so that's a healthy that's a healthy pullback for a move to the downside. So what this could be, we could be seeing a two touch flag with a three touch structural approach, uh, which is more if we are going to move to the downside, that is more in keeping with what I would expect to see so early on into a higher time frame run and if we get that then i'll be looking for a risk entry within the flag and i'll be able to manage it down to this first inflection point for something in the region of four percent and even if this was that ball flag that i was talking about to push higher and then we we then got something like this okay and this becomes a ball flag to push higher then i would be able to get my risk off of the table okay down to the area if that is where, where we reacted from for, for that uh, if that bull flag to push higher did actually form. OK, my second most preferred entry would be just a three touch flag like this. So we, do, we don't normally see these so much higher up into a higher time frame run. OK, so I, I think this is less likely. But if we got that and, and also just to touch on it, the reason this is my second most preferred entry is because this is the sort of thing that we would typically see if this was some kind of 
ball flag to push higher, where this then becomes like the middle section. That is often what the middle sections look like for a move to the upside. So I think this would this would less likely be part of a middle section within the larger ball flag to push higher. If okay, if we were going to push higher versus this one, okay, this, it might be difficult for you to understand that, but with um, a bit of experience, you start to see these things. And I've got an alert set just to see if we break down below that low, low just to see if we just drop out below that low. But we shall see. And I will reassess. I will reassess if that happens. So that is dollar yen. I have an alert set just to see if we push up to this high. Okay, and if we do not, then it was, it's likely that I will not be placing a trade on this pair. So last up is Swiss uh, pound Kiwi, rather. So on this one, if we just zoom out to the higher time frames, you can see, whoops, you can see that we tapped above. I talked about previously how this wick, th this move here just appears as a wick on pretty much all time frames. OK, on the daily chart, it's a wick. It doesn't look to me as if it's indic indicative of the sentiment of the market. OK, and therefore we who trade the Falcon strategy usually deem that to just be volatility. OK, so which changes my analysis slightly. So how that changes my analysis is I see this as the high, the area of value. This as a near miss to this high, which takes out this high, but doesn't take out this high. We then tap into that high, catch people the wrong side of the market, and then we push to the downside aggressively. We then have an impulse correction continuation. So the first thing, especially given that this is a sharp move up, is I ask myself, OK, is this a healthy pullback? Yes, it's in the region of 50% just over. And I've talked previously about how pound kiwi pairs such as pound kiwi can pull back to about the 60% mark before a move to the downside because they're more corrective in nature and they tend to pull back a little bit steeper uh, than some of the other pairs. Okay, I am mindful, and that's partly why this is lower down on the list, that we have a kind of morning star formation here and a lot of momentum to the upside. So this could be we, have, we can't be blind to this, the fact that this could be an impulse correction continuation to push higher to potentially take out this sharp uh, move here, which caused a big move to the downside, especially given that this wick, although we're deeming it to be volatility, this wick near missed too. So I am mindful of that. And then we would have this kind of this kind of structure. OK, we would have a one, two, three, which taps into that area and potentially pushes above before moving to the downside. So I am mindful of that. However, that doesn't mean, even if that was to occur, that we couldn't capitalize on a move to the downside in the in the meantime. If we just look at how price has been moving, we've seen these sharp scoops before the drop-off, okay? So it might just be another sharp scoop before the drop-off. And if I just drill down to the four-hour chart, you can see that we kind of have this piece of structure here. This is a separate piece of structure where there was volume and a sharp sell-off. OK, so this could just be a tap into this area. You can see we've wicked above now. We have this kind of M style pattern and we often see these. You, you know, you can see evidence of that here. M style pattern sell off. OK, we see the same thing here. Well, we see a scoop here, a V shape pattern and a sell off. We could be seeing the same thing again. It's in keeping with how pound Kiwi has been moving. So what are we looking for now that we've tapped into the area? We have to be mindful of the fact that this could be, for all things considered and everything I've said, we don't normally see this much volume before, uh, um, uh, just before an area of value if we're going to move to the downside. There was less volume on the other pairs in those areas. So this could be a bull flag to push higher for the reasons given. So if, we, if I was to get um, short in here, you could easily be tagged in, tagged out, and then price does something like that, okay, because of how much volume has been built here. Okay, so what I'll be looking for in this instance, I won't be looking for a, a three-touch tight flag here because, because of the amount of volume that's been built here. So in this instance, what I'll be looking for is a dropout. I'll be looking for price to drop out of this correction to show its hand. By that point, there would be momentum. The four-hour would be looking really good, and then it's likely – that the floodgates would open for a move to the downside and I, I'd be able to manage it down to this first sharp hook point for something in the region of 3 to 4%, okay? And that would, I'd be able to then separate this from this and that would confirm the move to the downside. That is what I'm going to be looking for, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I will be back with another video tomorrow, most likely. But for now, have a great day and I'll speak to you again soon. Thank you very much indeed for watching.